protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Four Syrian refugees have been caught plotting a massive Paris-style terror attack for Germany. Now, these were four men who planned to besiege the historic city center of Dusseldorf. They were going to launch a Paris-style massacre involving suicide bombs, targeting a street there with a lot of public transportation, uh, including tram stations. So German federal prosecutors have confirmed that three Syrian nationals have been arrested and their homes searched, while a further warrant has been issued for a young man who was currently under arrest in France. Now, this plot was discovered when that man, Salah A, gave himself up to the French security authorities. So he's now being held there uh, and under arrest. Um, two of these men received their orders from ISIS to carry out this plot. They arrived uh, to Turkey from Syria in 2014, and they were waiting to take advantage of this migrant surge pouring into Europe. They got there in 2015. They met with an explosives expert who was sent to Germany in 2014 by ISIS. And so this is something that's been going on clearly for a few years. As we reported, there was an Islamic State uh, manifesto released in December where they were bragging about the fact that they were exploiting uh, this refugee crisis since at least 2012, and that that was their plan was to flood the country with millions of people, millions of refugees, it would be too much to handle, and that they would hide jihadists within. And now we are seeing that indeed this is what is coming to pass. And uh, one of these really dangerous migrant smuggling routes is flourishing in lawless Libya. Now, authorities there, the officials have been able to block some of the crossings uh, that people were taking to, to Greece, but now they're looking for ways to shut down flows on the other major sea route into the EU from Libya. So there were efforts really going on to try to counter people trafficking, but they were thrown completely into disarray by the conflict following uh, Libya's up, um, the people's uprising there in 2011. So as we can see, there was just this massive destabilization that went on. Uh, now, years later, we're seeing the effects of that uh, area being destabilized in the Middle East, which is, of course, one of Clinton's Big successes, Hillary Clinton's big successes there, destabilizing the Middle East. And now, for whatever reason, she is going to be using her record as a neocon warmonger to attack Donald Trump. And so this is exactly what she did today in her foreign policy speech. Uh, she was arguing that Trump's skepticism on military intervention is going to be a threat to U.S. foreign policy and indeed a threat to the world order that she herself has helped to implement. Uh, the New York Times reported that the speech was going to specifically criticize Trump's remarks on NATO and his proposal that Japan, South Korea, and Saudi Arabia pay for their own defense. And indeed, she did talk about that today and how they were going to be testing uh, some of their nuclear, anti-nuclear weaponry this weekend. And they could only do that because they're allies. And why would Trump want to disrupt uh, any of our allies, any of our relationships that we have with allies. We have two friendly uh, countries on either border with us. Why would you want to disrupt that? So she's really attacking him. But Kurt Nimmo kind of really breaks it down as far as, let's look at this neocon warmongering record that Hillary Clinton is so proud of that she's going to attack Trump, saying he doesn't know what he's doing. Does she know what she's doing? Unless her plan is to absolutely destabilize regions. So Let's talk about uh, Afghanistan. Obama said he was going to withdraw all the troops. Well, Clinton backed a major escalation of the conflict in Afghanistan. She encouraged Obama to send between 30,000 and 100,000 additional troops. This was her, along with Defense Secretary Robert Gates and CIA Director David Petraeus. They pushed for the Afghan surge. 74 percent of U.S. casualties uh, there happened after that. Uh, she's also... Uh, voted for the illegal invasion of Iraq in October 2002. Uh, she, in public, she claimed to be against uh, keeping tr uh, forces there, but she privately encouraged it. She proposed spending approximately $3 billion to hire 5,100 private security co contractors to remain and fight in Iraq. Uh, the mercenary force was described as a State Department private army. And despite 70% of the American public opposing U.S. military action in Syria, Clinton pressured Obama to arm the anti-Assad rebels 
who, of course, as we reported many, many times, are Islamic State and al-Qaeda-linked terrorists. So she encouraged the president to arm them, and she also endorsed airstrikes on the Syrian government. So that's, of course, relonged, uh, resulted in prolonging the conflict. So we're basically in a U.S. proxy war right now. And, um, I mean, it just goes on and on. She backed the coup, military coup in Honduras. So a lot of people are just wondering if this reckless interventionism is going to hurt her with voters. Probably it will not, because, indeed, even her private server fiasco doesn't seem to be really hurting her as far as the Democratic Party is concerned. They're still pushing her as their future president, the first female president, even though it's kind of neck and neck there with Bernie Sanders, who knows what's going to happen after California uh, next week. Now, Edward Snowden tweeted out something just excellent right to the point. He talked about how if you expose uh, state secrets for the benefit of the world, you could be exiled. If you expose state secrets for your own personal reasons, you could become the next president here in the U.S., so let's find out why Judge Napolitano thinks Hillary is absolutely incompetent. And this is new information to me because I'm kind of like, I look at her server fiasco and I think, what else could there be? Well, now Clinton's chief of staff, while Secretary of State Cheryl Mills revealed in deposition that Clinton exclusively used a BlackBerry, not a laptop, desktop, or a tablet to communicate electronically. Well, what's the problem with that? Napolitano explains that this BlackBerry was her BlackBerry not a government-issued BlackBerry. So what does that mean? Because it wasn't government-issued, it was blocked on the seventh floor of the State Department. That's where her office is. So that means whenever she was in her office, she didn't have the means to communicate electronically to people that she had all around the world for the entire time that she was there. So what she would do is she would take a security team, go from the seventh floor to the sixth floor where her personal BlackBerry worked. So she has ambassadors all over the world trying to communicate with her and she cuts herself off. Or, you know, if you're there in Benghazi, she just takes a nap, goes to sleep because she's so tired. And he also uh, points out that absolutely, indeed, 100 percent of her emails were taken away from the government server and run through her private server to circumvent the Freedom of Information Act. And a lot of these other emails that she apparently did not turn over to the State Department revealed that indeed she didn't want her private emails commingling and getting seen by the State Department. Just what were you up to, Hillary Clinton? Nobody cares about your yoga poses or your wedding plans. So she is a criminal warmonger, of course, really, really good at circumventing uh, the Freedom of Information Act and, you know, destabilizing the Middle East. So she should really tout that record and run on that. Now, it's not just Clinton, but Obama, too, who are rolling out this Trump isn't qualified. He doesn't know what he's doing. And so we're really seeing this concerted effort now. Uh, let's take a look at how the president totally malfunctioned on stage. If we turn against each other based on divisions of race or religion, if we fall for, you know, a, a bunch of okie doke just because it, it, you know, it, it, it uh, you know, it, 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 it sounds funny or. So first of all, what is he even talking about? Racial tensions have actually exploded in this country since he's been president. And don't tell me it's because of racist white people, because it was the majority of white people who voted for him twice. So that was your bad. But one of his huge accomplishments, of course, is the Affordable Care Act which of course is now becoming even more unaffordable every single year. Now, uh, Texas' largest health insurance provider has announced in a statement yesterday, this is Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas, they're gonna raise their rates by as much as 60% in 2017. So this is gonna completely enrage people. It's getting super expensive. And they say that the reason why they're having to do this is to account for lower than hoped enrollment, sicker than expected customers, and problems with the government's financial backstop for the insurance markets. The company says it's lost over a billion dollars. Man, well, I hate to say I told you so, but you know who else just cannot help himself and had to say I told you so is Donald Trump, who, of course, tweeted about that immediately, that people are panicking and they're very angry, angry because health care costs are exploding. Of course, Trump has a pretty good answer to this whole Obamacare debacle. 
check it out on his website. Everyone's always saying, well, what is his plan? What's he gonna do? Uh, but back to this whole race racism thing. Now we've got a professor coming out saying that it's the racist Trump supporters who are a bigger domestic terror threat than jihadists. This is George Mason University adjunct professor David Alfer, and he's calling the right wing worse than Islamists, and that it's racist Donald Trump supporters. Uh, they're blaming the growing physical violence at Trump rallies on backlash against an increasingly diverse and progressive American society. So clearly he is has no concept of reality. Reality be damned because the violence scene has almost exclusively been carried out by anti-Trump agitators, as we've shown you in many, many videos. Buckley, tell us about Alexa Pure Breeze discounted over 25% off as an introductory promotion. It's the Alexa Pure Breeze. It's an energy efficient HEPA ion cluster air purification system. It has a four stage purification process. It has a HEPA filter, pre filters, and a carbon activated filters. And the most amazing thing about it is that it has this patented ion cluster technology that kills airborne microbes with a final byproduct of clean water, not ozone. Because there's a lot of units out there that do that, that will sterilize the air, they will take out toxins and microbes, but you always come back into the room and you have that ozone smell. And as a matter of fact, if you leave a room sealed and you have one of those running, toxic. it is toxic and it's kind of dangerous. So this is non-toxic. It's a beautiful unit. It really looks good. I mean, it will look beautiful in your house in a corner. The Alexa Pure Breeze, which operates as a fan, it's super quiet, it cleans the air. Every major room in your house really should have one of these. The cheapest equivalent unit costs $259.95, and there are other units that are up to $899 to $1,000 that do exactly what this unit does, but they're not as quiet because this one has a silent mode which runs at 16 decibels. One thing that I encourage everybody to do is go and just look up online the toxicity of being inside all the time. In this current age, we're inside the vast majority of the time. Hardly do we ever get outside in the sun. We're usually out inside do doing something in our office or at home. Houses have all kinds of stuff that's outgassing. I'm not going to tell you what the story is, but just go and Google that and look at a, a toxicity. Sure, sure. It's well known. Inside. Great job and great job, Alexa Pure. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com for all the nutraceuticals. Buckley, thank you so much, my friend.